let me tell you why the Nikon Z mount 24-200 f4-6.3 VR is an almost perfect lens. If you look at the budget, the weight and some of the basic characteristics of the lens, this is an irresistible proposition. It's weather sealed. It's just about just a little above 500 grams in weight. It's compact in size and it's a very sharp lens. On top of that, it's got a very nice filter thread. The filter size is 67 mm. The quality standards for the Z mount lenses are very high. So most of those lenses are extremely good. They're extremely sharp across the focal length. If you talk about the zooms, now this is not an S line lens, but it is very sharp. It is as sharp as the 24 to 70 F4, which comes as a kit with the Z6 and the Z6 II and the Z7 and Z7 II. It's a common filter size and most people will have a 67 mm ND filter or a polarized uh, filter. So clearly quite a few things are great about this lens. Now if you look at the price, the price is, I won't say that the price is it's a cheap lens. It's about $900 so it's not exactly a cheap lens. Another great strength about this lens is the ability to focus close. One, It focuses at 1.6 feet away at 24mm and at 200mm it focuses at a merely 2.3 feet away which is which gives you a sort of a macro ability with this it's not really exactly a macro lens but it obviously it it, it allows you to make the subject bigger in the frame um, and and that i think is a very very uh, you know it's, it's a great strength for this lens now if you look at the lens this is supposed to be a very practical lens you have a very wide focal range to sort of work with 24 to 200 so it's completely focused on practicality that's why it's also light that's why it's also uh, compact but you know what's not going with what's not aligning with the intended practicality of the lenses is, is the lack of brightness if you look at the f value 4 to 6.3 there are many ways to deliver it to you uh, the way this lens delivers it, that, that brightness to you is not, in my view, not optimal. Now, if you look at tam some of the Tamron lenses, even when you have a sort of a variable aperture lens, they try and ensure that you have more light coming in for most of the focal range. It's, especially if you look at their wide angle uh, lenses, that, that 70 to 35 is a good example. I think 2.8 to f4. In this case, f4 to 6.3 you practically do not get f4 beyond i think 26 27 mm before you reach 50 mm you're already looking at f5.6 before you have reached 70 mm focal length you have already reached f6 and at around 80 mm you're at 6.3 now from 80 onwards till 200 for the entire focal range you have 6.3 that's not a very bright lens to work with I really don't mind so much, you know, uh, using 6.3 from 120 onwards because it's supposed to be cheap lens. They're not supposed to be so much glass. But at least till 50, I would have expected f4. Because, you know, a lot of people, when they want to take a few portraits, at 50 mm, you want to have a little bit of depth of field, a little bit of background blur, so that you can really use the versatility, versatility of the lens. If you do not have that, the lens is not as versatile as the focal range suggests. So a lot of people say in their reviews, oh, what a great lens, fantastic lens, this, that, blah, blah. I understand it's a great lens from quite a few quality point, points of view. For example, uh, the fact that it's weather sealed uh, at this price point, the fact that it's a light lens, the fact that it's a very sharp lens for its um, the kind of lens it is and that that it covers the entire range from 24 to 200 like it, it's it's supposed to be that one lens that can do it all um, but i'll tell you, it, you you cannot just look at sharpness and the fact that you have uh, 24 to 200 focal range you have to also look at the person who's going to use it someone who buys it is also probably looking at one lens to do everything right the reason for buying this, most of the people will buy this 
will buy it because they want that one single lens which will do most of the work and they will try and uh, get some satisfaction out of using this one lens for some time to come now if you give them um, f6 at 60 mm they're not going to feel satisfied with the lens they'll immediately need, feel the need to upgrade to a prime and that prime will come at around 500 to 600 dollars so what are we doing in this lens you buy into the lens you like some aspect of it and you think okay i get sharp results i wish i could use a little bit more right light i wish i could get a little bit more depth of field and then you realize that this lens is lacking in those uh, aspects yes at the wider end of the lens you can probably do a bit of uh, architecture and you know landscape photography with f4 at 25 4mm that's not going to be a problem but how are you going to use a middle range from 35 to 75 to 85 that middle range is for me completely unusable because you're not going to get depth of field at all and that's the typical range that you're going to use for either portraiture uh, typical portraiture or you're going to use it uh, inside uh, a closed space for example inside a restaurant or in your uh, inside your house where you typically had low light now with the f6 at at 55 or 60 mm you will have to raise the iso very up you're not going to get the same amount of the same quality that you would otherwise get at even f4 so because you're talking about losing two stops of light there, almost two stops of light there. that's a lot so i think um, it, it, it's it's not usable for, I mean, not satisfying uh, for uh, the fo focal range between 27, 28 mm till I think 80 mm. Um, at 120 mm onwards, because it's you're going to get that compression, you're going to get the zoom reach with the zoom, you're going to get a little bit of that background blur because of the longer focal length. Yeah, you can do some uh, interesting stuff with that. I think that's very handy but for me 24 to 30 is what the lens gives you and then the lens starts serving you from 100 mm 120 mm onwards till 200 mm so uh, it, it, it to me it feels like there's this gap you know from 30 mm to 100 mm is where the lens is almost absent it doesn't do enough for you and i think if you're paying that about 900 dollars uh this shouldn't have happened so i i'm not too ha happy with this lens i actually wanted to buy this lens and uh, that's the reason this is the reason why i couldn't uh, actually buy this lens now this is a great lens for video it doesn't have much focus breathing at all and uh, very smooth focusing very good focusing in fact so for video and for photography it's a good hybrid lens so there are you know like i said there are many positives of this lens but the way this lens is practically absent for you from 30 to 100 mm is something that I can't appreciate because I think $900 is a lot of money for someone who is out to buy a cheap lens a cheap lens he clearly doesn't have $2,000 to spend on a lens so therefore the value that the person is seeking out of 900 is high now Keeping that in mind, I think um, it's a bit of a letdown. This lens, I would have liked this lens to have maintained f 4.5 till um, 75, 85 mm, and from there onwards, even if the lens had sh very sharply reduced in brightness within 100 mm, let's say if this would have gone down to 6.3, it wouldn't have mattered. But that normal range is very critical because most of the people who are going to buy this lens are going to use the normal range the most and that's the most unusable part of the, of the lens so that's it guys i thought this is going to help a lot of people who are new to the z system to the z series of cameras the, after the release of z62 it's uh, turning out to be quite a successful icon a lot of people are finally starting to pick up the z series of cameras they're realizing that <laughs> there's been a whole lot of crap and bullshit around this uh, nikon mirrorless series of cameras and they're waking up to how great these cameras are. I'm, trust me, you love using these cameras, these bodies, the way they autofocus, the kind of 
you know the picture quality that you get out of them the video quality that, that you get out of them the, the extendability uh, in terms of video you can shoot at black magic raw you can shoot shoot at pro res raw if you have uh, an atomos 10 gen if you invest a little bit on upgrading it to um that uh, to uh, pay a little bit of money to, i think 250 dollars uh, to nikon and get the software update it's a fantastic camera it's such a complete camera that way uh, i think a lot of the criticism that it has received is not well deserved help us by subscribing to this channel sharing your comments down below because you know when you comment and engage with these videos of course you will comment if you have anything something to say when you do that uh, it tells the system that you know uh, this is useful for some people and uh, so if you don't have anything to say maybe just say hi <laughs> okay so uh, when that happens it just helps the channel if you just say hi or hello or if you just say thank you if it works for you and uh, um, yeah so uh, it doesn't take much from you please subscribe share comment and we'll come back very soon to you have a great year ahead thank you